If you don't stop what you're doing, you're not gonna live a day past 40. I didn't wanna die. I've been bullied all my I've life. I've been bullied all my life. I've been obese. I've been obese. I was just big, big. They also say I have a genetically deficient body. I'm not gonna let it get to me. I'm not gonna let it get to me. People tell me I can't do it, I just keep doing it. They say life begins at 40. Come 2019, I'll be competing in the amateur Olympia stage. I aim for the top, against the best of the best, the best of the best, and hopefully to get a chance to earn my pro card in bodybuilding. Way back in 2010, a friend of mine saw me, and he owns a gym out in Iloilo. And when I walked into the door at Starbucks, the first thing he told me is, if you don't stop what you're doing, you're not gonna live a day past 40. I weighed 310 pounds, 45 inch waistline, say about 41% body fat. Really scared the crap out of me. And that's what got me started in wanting to be more fit. Well, my lifestyle before 2010 was, for lack of a better word, sinful. sinful. Involved a lot of food, a lot of nights out, even alcohol. I didn't really care. I didn't really care. Me and my wife to go out and eat. That was my escape. I didn't really think much about getting fit. So the more unhealthy I became, the more weight I gained, the more depressed I became. I think the reason for that is you look at yourself in the mirror and you get more depressed because you look like crap. And every time we'd go to the mall and buy clothes, nothing would fit because I was just big. Can we eat in we noon? No. <laughs> clothes still don't fit me, but it's a good not fit. The, the day when I really decided was because I looked at my wife and, and I keep telling myself, if I don't stop what I'm doing, I'm not gonna live a day past 40. I didn't wanna die. I promised my wife a lot of things, so I at least want to live till that day that I'm able to make her proud of it. First concrete step that I did was stop eating junk food. Burritos, popcorn, marshmallow s'mores. It was tough in the beginning, extremely tough. But when I started uh, cutting out the stuff that I needed to cut out of my diet, it felt like crap because I was so used to the sugar. When I, when I lost the weight, because I went from 305, 310, 305 to 190, I hated every day that I was 190 because I looked run down, uh, there was no muscle at all. I lost most of it. Uh, I started training, I started eating again, but I started eating right and I started seeing some development. And definitely for me, that's when it kind of started because that's when I really got serious into bodybuilding. Just kept on reading, I kept on watching videos, I kept on learning how these, how the hierarchy works and how, what a successful bodybuilder is. Oh, Jay Cutler, Jason Ha, the two of them. That's where I got the goatee from. <laughs> but I'm a huge fan of the guy. I picked these two guys because they're such opposites. I'm kind of like Jason, who doesn't hold anything back. You ask me a question, you know, I'm gonna tell you if you suck, you suck. But yet, I realize living in a world where it's social media and everything nowadays, you have to kind of learn how to be diplomatic. And Jay is somebody I look up to in that aspect. He's, he's a very likable guy. He knows how to conduct himself. And you never hear any scandal about him. Every time I do something, I aim for the top. My dream is to someday compete in the Olympia. The way I prepare mentally, it's just I start thinking that it's my end goal. People tell me I can't do it, I just keep doing it. That's where I get more fuel when people tell me I can't. I'm learning how to, for lack of a better word, to suck it in. So that, that's, mentally I think that's what I do to prepare. Actually, the training's not that hard because I, I really enjoy doing it, but it's the food that's a little bit tough. I want to eat, but I can't. Well, I'm, I'm lucky because I kind of gotten to like what I'm eating now because since I'm on keto, I, I don't have any carbs, but I can have fat and protein. So we cook everything in butter. 10 weeks out going to the competition, that's when we start doing cardio twice, three times a day. So the food, the caloric intake starts to go down. So you're basically depleting your body. 
typical day is you wake up, you do cardio, you eat, and then you rest a little bit and you eat again. I go train, then I eat again. <laughs> it's about six meals a day. Honestly, I don't really have anything right now. All I have is my hard head that even if people tell me that I'm too old for it, I, I keep pushing through. In the beginning, I was offended. I have no, I mean, it's ego, you know, I didn't like people who don't like me. I couldn't accept that. That's how I felt, you know, and people tell me I, I'm genetically, what do they say? Genetically deficient in Tagalog, of course. One day I just got tired. It's very stressful to react adversely. So, you know, I just started telling myself, you know, why bother? My takeaway from my last competition to where I am now is patience. The main thrust of Swollen Panda is to actually educate the aspiring bodybuilders, aspiring fitness uh, fanatics, people who just want to get fit, people who just want to start living a healthy life.